Hey you guys, welcome back. Uh, as you probably know, I, uh, I went to an orchid show yesterday. Uh, it is the one in my uh, area, in the Burlington area, at the uh, Royal Botanical Gardens. It's their annual show and sale. So about two weeks ago I went to the, uh, the Toronto one, the Southern Ontario Orchid Society. Anyway, I can't even go through all that. Uh, so this time when I went, my main purpose, actually I met some of you again. I met uh, Fernanda. I believe I'm getting your name right, Fernanda, and uh, another fellow YouTuber, uh, Ferncraft. Um, I believe your name is Christine. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm really horrible with names. Absolutely horrible with names. If you ask anybody at work, well, unless you've been there for about uh, six or eight months, I probably don't know who you are. <laughs> I know who you are to see you, but I don't know your name. So anyway, it's a problem I have. Anyway, uh, the, the main reason I wanted to go was to go and get some, uh, some new orchid media. I like to use the, the fine bark uh, pre-made, uh, what is it? It's custom orchid uh, media mix fine bark base. Uh, it's got like perlite in it, there's some uh, vermiculite, there's the, the fir bark and uh, some charcoal and whatnot. I get this from Raven Vision. Um, you might have seen it, Brad has... Uh, has done a video on Raven Vision products before, and uh, I really like it. They go to the show uh, annually, so uh, I try to pick up some some stuff to keep me uh, through the season, and then um, I don't have to do the the mail order and then pay for shipping and stuff. If they're there, I'll get it. If they're not, well, I'll try other sources. But it's so convenient, and they've got a good product. Um, so yeah, I've got uh, two bags of that. This stuff was $10 a bag. I think it's fairly reasonable, uh, just because it's like a pre-mixed stuff and you just uh, use it and go. Uh, I tend to add some sphagnum moss to it anyway, just to uh, make it so that it holds more moisture. Because uh, as you know, I'm, I'm a lazy gardener, and if, uh, and if it's going to dry out too quickly, I need to add a little bit of uh, moisture retentiveness to the soil, or to the media. So I also came out of there with a few new plants. Uh, I ended up going with small stuff this time. So um, this one is, uh, is a uh, Maxillaria tenifolia. This one here is a Sideria japonica. And as you can see, there is a, uh, a spike growing right there. And then there's a, I think, I don't know whether you're able to see, but, but by my finger here, there's another little nubbin. And I believe that is another flower spike. So, yeah. And then I've got this one. What is this one? This one is uh, uh, Hera Ella. Her uh, my goodness. I, I was preparing before this video, and can you believe it? I can't get it out. Hera Ella uh, uh, Retro Cala. Uh, this one's really, really cool. Uh, I'll bring you guys in. Well, actually, I'll just hold them up as we do these. I'll give you a little bit of care and culture for these guys. This one is a miniature orchid. Uh, both this one and the uh, the Sideria japonica are both uh, are miniatures. Uh, well, the Sideria is more of a not necessarily a miniature, but it's a smaller one. It grows to be a similar size to a, a Phalaenopsis. Um, so this one here is a monopodial orchid, and it's from Taiwan. Uh, it's a really really interesting one. It's a uh, it's a miniature, and uh, the leaves get to be about uh, one and a half inches long. So realistically, the leaves aren't going to be much bigger than this. This is a blooming sized plant. It's a sequential bloomer, so uh, it'll produce um, a few flower spikes at a time. And there's there's usually between one and three flowers on a spike at a time. And uh, it's a beautiful flower. I'll put the, the picture of the bloom up top here at some uh, at some point. This plant uh, prefers like a Phalaenopsis condition. It's an intermediate grower, so it likes between 55 and 65 degrees Fahrenheit. That's roughly between uh, 13 and 18 degrees Celsius. Um, it's a medium light, again, like a Phalaenopsis. Uh, it likes even moisture, and uh, it, likes, it likes a constant air movement, very much like, like a, uh, um, a Phalaenopsis. So this plant, uh, they recommend that you, you mount it. But if you can't provide the humidity, uh, it likes 50% and up for humidity. And if you get higher humidity, it likes good airflow. So if you're not able to produce 
the the amount of humidity that it, it needs then it, it is recommended that you keep growing it in a pot environment but if you do decide to mount it um, they suggest using some sphagnum moss uh, in behind the root system so that it holds on to some moisture and you're gonna you're gonna mist it or dunk it once a day in water and then hang it back up again uh, whereas if it's in a pot you could probably get away with watering it uh, depending on on your situation every two or three days maybe a little bit longer uh, so yeah this one here is quite dry so I'm gonna give it a drink after the video and uh, so yeah this is a really interesting little plant uh, one of the sellers was was talking to me about it I was just uh, very intrigued by the stuff that was on his table that's also where I got the the sideria so uh, it was just a bunch of mini miniature orchids in a, in a box and they were all reasonably priced this one was $15 um, we'll go to the the Japanese sideria right now so I'll put this off to the side really really cute um, and and because another thing about this one because the leaves you notice how they're fanned out but they're not fanned on top of each other like an, uh, a vanda orchid they're fanned off kind of on an angle so all the leaves are kind of flat and you can see them all so the flower spikes are going to develop and they're going to be above the leaves so they're not going to be hidden uh, so that's going to be really really interesting so when it does start to bloom he thought that there was going to be one with a bloom spike on it but I don't see a bloom spike and we didn't find one uh, there that had a bloom spike but he did try uh, but when, the, when I do get spikes on this one I will uh, show you guys very excited to see how this one grows this was a spur of the moment purchase, purchase didn't need it uh, didn't necessarily want it in the beginning but then as I saw it as I saw the photo uh, I thought hey that'd be kind of cool and it's a miniature so it doesn't really get very big and as you know my collection is getting a little bit too big and I need to if I want to have stuff I need to have them smaller so I can fit more in a small space uh, so then the uh, the Sideria japonica this one is a really really cool one uh, I actually first heard about this one from uh, Siniti. Uh she had a beautiful one and I think uh, just recently she's had a problem with mealybugs on hers and her plant isn't growing nearly as well as it once did but uh, uh, still, she's she's trying to bring it back to health. This one has two spikes. Uh, it it starts flowering quite young. The leaves, um, I guess I guess it could be uh, uh, in time. It'll be double this size, but uh, right now it's still quite young. Uh, but still, uh, it's going to be a smaller orchid. This is also an intermediate grower, and it's going to uh, like a, a medium light. Uh, very much like the the phalaenopsis, uh, basically the same care. Um, medium like uh, uh, humidity is about fifty percent or higher. Again, like the phalaenopsis, uh, water as media becomes dry. Uh, intermediate. Uh, I'm probably going over these things. I wrote myself some notes so that I was able to uh, remember. Um, yeah, intermediate grower. Uh, so like the phalaenopsis, uh, fifty-five to what is that? Uh, 55 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit or 13 to 18 degrees uh, Celsius is good and uh, if it's a little bit warmer that's okay and uh, the flowers supposedly smell like citrus like lemon so I'm very interested to see how this one uh, this one grows and these are uh, found in the uh, the mountains of southern Japan that's kinda interesting so it's a really really cool variety and I can't wait to show you the blooms if you haven't already seen uh, on Sunidi's channel or even uh, uh, Chris. Chris has uh, a Japanese sideria and uh, I believe his is in bloom now. So yeah, uh, stay tuned and, and eventually we'll see some, some buds on this spike. And last but not least, we have this uh, Maxillaria tenifolia. I've actually watched these plants uh, for quite some time. I'm very intrigued by the pseudobulbs. Uh, this one isn't doing it right now, um, but th they kind of call it a coconut orchid. Um, where uh, the, the pseudobulbs will grow on top of the existing pseudobulb so eventually you'll have a chain of, of pseudobulbs going up and uh, picture Maria if you've seen her YouTube channel she did an interesting video on uh, Maxillaria tenifolia where she looks at the root structure and, and uh, as they produce a new pseudobulb on top of the old pseudobulb the roots are actually in a sheath that goes down to the soil so you don't have this rambliness of, of roots uh, it's very nicely contained and you don't even realize that there's a crazy amount of roots so uh, very very interesting and the uh, the flowers are scented I believe they smell like uh, coconut as well 
Um, but they remind me of coconuts more of the pseudobulbs growing along the, the stem. Uh, so this ranges from Mexico to Nicaragua. Uh, very interesting. And uh, it prefers a medium light as well, kind of like a Phalaenopsis, except this one is a little bit on the brighter side. So between a Catalea and a Phalaenopsis light level, intermediate temperatures, again, uh, that's between 55 and 65 degrees Fahrenheit, or 13 to 18 Celsius. Um, average home temperature, really. Um, you might be a little bit warmer in the house, actually, maybe around 21 degrees uh, Celsius, uh, 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, humidity is about 50%. It's not really asking for a lot. In the summertime here, we get easily into the 70-80%. Uh, usually it's in the 90s outside. It gets very humid here. Uh, so this one's going to be really, really nice. This one, they, um, they naturally have a rainy season in the summertime. So they like to be watered very, very well and fertilized during the active growing period uh, in the summer. Uh, spring summer months and then around November December you want to cut back the watering and uh, you want to let it dry between waterings you want to watch the pseudobulbs though because you don't want them to wrinkle too too much between waterings um, so just keep your eye on that but uh, all in all it's a really really interesting really interesting plant it's it kind of reminds me of grass it doesn't have a lot of leaves on each uh, pseudobulb but uh, in time, uh, Brad has had these on his uh, videos where, where it's just this massive plant and it's just like a like a ornamental grass, but then you look at the pseudo bulbs and there's just like masses of them, just huge, and they're just really, really funky to look at. And uh, the flowers are small. Uh, again, the flowers are going to be all up at the top here as I'm doing these, and uh, they're, they're, they're like an orange-red color, um, and, and they smell beautiful. So, yeah. Anyway, these are my purchases. I didn't really go overboard this time. And uh, again, I wanted to keep it small. And uh, so, yeah, uh, stay tuned for more updates. I will post a video of uh, all of the photos that were taken at the, uh, at the Orchid Show this time, at the Burlington Orchid Show. Uh, it's going to be a little bit shorter, and I'm not going to do an introduction. I'm just going to go in, and it's just going to be the music. I thought, hey, if you want to play it in a loop and have the music and the, and the beautiful photos in the background... Uh, it's better than having <laughs> me talking and describing what was happening prior to, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, if you like this video, uh, please uh, give me a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't joined my, uh, my Facebook, uh, pages, feel free. Uh, there's a lot of interesting, uh, conversations going on over there. A lot of beautiful photos of what all of you are growing or collecting or, or just purchased from Orchid Shows. It's pretty awesome. Uh, so there's Plants and Things What's Growing page. That one is the one I recommend. I, I, I'm more frequent in there than I am at my regular Plants and Things uh, uh, people page. Um, so yeah, if you're trying to get a response from me, it's best to go to the What's Growing page. I'll be there more often, and I, I tend to respond a lot faster. So anyway, uh, happy growing everyone, and uh, hope all is well. Zoom. I don't. <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, I thought that they would be a little bit bigger. But they're they're quite small. Like anyway, you'll see. You'll see. For the rest of you, you'll see. <laughs> uh, so let's open this up. I'll bring you a little bit closer down below here, and we'll check it out.